Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back to our next podcast. My name is Chamberlain Burke. And I'm Devlin Burke. And we've been focusing on and plan on continuing to focus on uh, the women in rock music. This week, we listened to the three albums by Lisa Marie Presley, um, those being To Whom It May Concern, Now What, and Storm and Grace. Um, before we, uh, before I make any comments, Devlin, could you give me, um, talk about your impressions of um, Lisa Marie Presley as a singer, a singer-songwriter, um, and, as, as, and what you think of these albums? Well, I was very curious to hear her story when the first album came out. Um, as we know, she's led a very public life, and I was anxious to hear um, her thoughts on it. So I was very eager to pick, to pick up the first one, To Whom It May Concern. And I find she writes from a very real place, and I love her lyrics. Her lyrics are my favorite thing. I could quote them for hours. Um, I, I find that I can take these songs and put them in moments in my life. Like, you know how people always are always trying to build a soundtrack to their life, and you, they do playlists, you know, uh, of moments in their life, Lisa's songs fit in very, very well. I also love the fact that she adds intelligence into her lyrics. She throws in words like belligerent, transgressive, suppressive, and her imagery is beautiful. One of my favorite lyrics is in the song Turn to Black. Um, it's, did you like the voodoo that I put now on you when I slither in my closet, sweat vengeance like a faucet? It's one of the few lyrics of hers I'm trying to figure out. I dissect that, that lyric all the time in my head. And I found that relatability and that imagery and intelligence very refreshing. And it's what I long for more women. I long for more women to write about the, to kind of write from this standpoint and not just about love and going to a club and dancing. I long for this. Now, I know you are particularly new to this and you listen to these three albums what were your impressions um well as you said they are relatable they they uh, as we were listening to listening to these albums you pointed out different points at which this song fit into this part of your life or this incident in your life and and so i can see that i can, i can see it completely and she does use real life not like you said, club partying. Oh, let's go down and party and dance and disco and do this and do that. Um, her, yeah, I'm, I'm such a fan. Uh, but anyway, um, her lyrics, when, when I read the printout, when I was handed the printout of the lyrics, they are like poetry. They are, they do have intense imagery. Um, they are very, very, you know, mentally visual. Um, and she does use a lot of big words that you don't see in pop in pop music today. Um, now that being said, she has a beautiful voice. It's a husky, raw, not quite like a Kim Carnes uh, or Bonnie Tyler kind of voice, but but she's got this husky, raw, really pretty voice. All right. Now my problem is with these three albums. The songs all sound alike, vocally and musically, and and lyrically. It was they were kind of interchangeable. Um, there were a few songs that were kind that had great intros or a great beat or great harmony. <coughs> Excuse me, but I didn't see a lot of variety in types of songs. And if you think back to the, the types of songs that, uh, like George Michael has done or Michael Jackson, um, you know, somebody who will take a chance at, Oh, I did a, I did a, a, a pop, not pop, but like a, like an Island music or like, like, uh, the beach boys did Kokomo. You know, there's not a big variety of, of song styles in this. They're all very, very similar. And it was kind of sad when I made notes on them that said, Ooh, this one's up tempo and I like the harmony, but I didn't really have a whole lot else to say. Um, and, um, there was a song for instance, sinking in that she showed, a a real vocal range 
and real singing. It was a very different up up tempo song, and that was off of which album? The, to whom it may to whom it may concern. I liked that. It was different, but I I mean I sat up straight because it sounded different. The song to her children called "So Lovely" on that same album is a great voice. Um, but the songs are all very quiet. They're kind of husky and smoky. It's almost like being in a smoke-filled room in the you know 50s or 60s. Um, I do love her voice. I would like to see her take some more ch um, chances musically, lyrically, vocally, and do something a little bit different. If she wants to be a singer, I'd like to see a different type of music. I'd like to see a variety of song styles. Now, if this is what she's trying to do, she did a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. I also do want to touch on another thing. Her voice and her lyrics are very good at setting a mood. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. You get this very great atmosphere. And to me, it's very contemplative. Like she, like she doesn't want you to focus on licks or anything. She wants you to focus on her words and what she's saying and how she's trying to connect with you as the listener. That's what I that's that's what I take away from it, and um, I know you wanted to talk about idiot off of now what because when we played that song for her she was smiling throughout the whole song. I I wrote this this song idiot off of this album which what which album now what is a very different song. It's very up tempo. It's got a driving beat. This was my favorite out of all three albums. Um. Uh. This song has lyrics. I'm going, to I'm going to repeat the chorus here. It says, oh, please remember me. Believe in me as someone who's never going to wish you well. Oh, please remember me. Believe in me as someone who wants you to go to hell. Um, obviously, we can kind of figure out what that's about. Um, but, the, but the song was so different, and it had that. Um, what I was looking for is something a little bit different. She can sing beautifully. But she didn't really, tr I didn't hear her singing on all three albums as much. Um, on that same album, the song called Turn to Black had great attitude and empowerment. She does use a few bad words, um, but it's nothing you haven't heard before. Yeah. On, on Turn to Black especially, I feel that that song is very much um, kind of like what we were talking about, Lita Ford being, woman, uh, being female empowerment because she says, did you think that you could put a saddle on me, show me, ride me, clown me, warn me, you could control me? And um, uh, Oh, it goes on to say, tell me, did you think I'd fit, fit you like a bonnet with a little flower on it or a tear inside, inside your sonnet? And, of course, these could uh, sometimes don't print correctly. But, yeah, um, she's got a lot of good messages and a lot of good vocals. I'd, I'd like to see her, you know, I'd like to know more. I, I, I'm not poo-pooing any of this. But when we were listening to this, it was easy to go, I heard this before, I heard this before. The song seemed kind of interchangeable. Like I said, she can sing beautifully, she writes beautifully, she challenges you mentally and, and, and through your imagination and your, and your imagery. Um, I would like to see her take some chances and do some different song styles. Other than that, I think she's great, but this, it was actually kind of, kind of sad that they all sounded alike. I get your point there. Um, I also did want to ask you, I we I had you read an interview that she did by Kyle Anderson for a magazine. I'm sorry, Kyle, I don't remember the name of the magazine. Um, but she talked about how on Storm and Grace, she says that on the first two albums she hid behind turn up the vocals, turn up the guitars, and on here, on Storm and Grace, they didn't do that. And I think that would be an interesting discussion for our listeners do you think, did you hear a, a, a more organic sound off of Storm and Grace than you did the other two? Um, in all honesty, um, no. Um, and, I, and I was actually, because I, I, if I remember correctly, one of the quotes, it was an interview with Lisa Marie Presley and T-Bone Burnett. And, um, and he said he heard the demos and considered the demos to be the album. But to me, by the time I got to this third album, I was like, move on. I've heard this song before. Move on. I've heard this song before. Um, it's not that I don't like the songs. I just, they all kind of sound alike over three albums. What did we count? 33 songs. Um, and, and I, you know, when you listen to someone, 
my personal feeling is I shouldn't be surprised when I hear something a little bit different or a little more up tempo or a different different instrumentation. Um, you know, um, and 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 if this is her style, she's doing a great job. I would like to hear something a little bit different because when she on some of these, it was just okay. I've heard this, but but um, you know, T Bone Burnett and she worked very well together. And, uh, you know, and I think it's a good album. It's just, I, I just, I just really like to see something different from her, but she's beautiful. She's a great writer and a great singer. I agree. I think you're right. Um, we encourage you to, um, pick up her albums and form your own opinions and you can leave a comment in the comment section and challenge us or talk to us. And we're more than willing to talk back. So thank you very much for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this. And, and, uh, as Devlin said, we're interested in hearing your comments. Um, we're not sure who we're going to do next, but please keep checking back and see, uh, we still want to continue on with, uh, some women in rock for a little bit. So we hope you're all well and, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.